We have seen in the last two previous videos something about the new password policies and about the new password reset web we have in the identity manager. Now it's time for some more technical details so that you are informed here as well. I'd like to start with the default password policy. I mentioned many times we do have a default password policy and this default password policy protects exactly two passwords. The one is the, the, the dialog user password. This is the password of a system user. And the other one, it's person dialog user password. This is the dialog password of a person object. Remember on the person object on the Michelangelo's tab, there are two passwords. One is the central password, this is not meant. And there is another password, the dialog user password. And this is what is meant here with the default password policy. Passwords for other target systems are stored or protected by other password policies. I'm talking about the default password policy right now. Now let's talk about who is able to change or modify password policies or manage them. First of all, system users can do so. System users are the one identity manager development account. These are the privileged accounts able to do a lot of things depending on the permissions they have. These are the assignments of these VID groups, permission groups you have seen in the system before. From the business side, more target system administrators are the people who are able to manage their password policies. That means the password policies for their target systems. And at the end, the standard identity manager safety first is shipped with a password policy per target system. That means if you add a target system to your identity manager, there will be an according password policy as well, pre-configured and will take place from the first minute on. As you have seen as well in the past from a password policy itself, could not every property be modified. Some of them are always only able to be modified on insert, but the standard properties that defines a password or a password strength, these properties can then be edited. And of course, what is possible all the time is that you just deactivate a password policy and replace them by a custom password policy. A good question for the one or the other who want to upgrade his identity manager installation could be what happens with the password configuration we had in the past. Remember, there were some configuration parameters talking about passwords and random passwords and how to create them and whatever else. This is now considered in password policies. That means all of these configuration parameters gets converted during the system migration from one system to the other, so that at the end you get password policies with the configuration, depending on the old configuration parameter settings you had. As well, templates are modified in a way that they consider password policies and the complete password policy stuff is as well defined for UNS account and all of these in UNS account stored systems. As already mentioned, um, there are password expirations now inserted in the identity manager. And this password expiration support allows to expire passwords for person objects, that means identities and system user objects. The whole thing is completely shipped with some business processes around. For example, there's a password notification that will now be sent out to the users. There are some configuration parameters underneath of common and authentication just to configure the behavior. And yes, of course, all of these stored dates somewhere in the identity manager that says password has to be expired are stored in the UTC date format. That means around the world, you will always get the correct time information. The password policies could not be complete if there is not a best password attempt or a way to prohibit empty passwords. Both it's implemented in the identity manager, person objects again and uh, system users will be included into that support. On the one hand side, all bad password attempts gets counted and if uh, on the password policy configured number it's overdone, then the complete thing will blocked out for a while so that you have to try your next attempt a little bit later. On the other hand side, in the past, it was possible to deal with empty passwords. Remember, we did that in training environments. But now with the Identity Manager version 8, this is not possible anymore. The only way to go back to this old scenario is to remove or to reconfigure these password policies in a way that they allow these empty passwords. If you don't do so, all of these accounts after the migration are locked and you cannot sign in again. So it makes sense before you start to upgrade your installation to version eight, just to set everywhere a password where no password was set before. 
This should, from my perspective, more be a problem in demo environments and not in your productive environments. And if there are empty passwords in your productive environment, this is now the time to get rid of this crap as fast as possible. All of these password policies with their expirations and whatever else other configurations are only half good if existing connections will not be re-evaluated. And this is what happens in the identity manager as well. So if, for example, a password expires, the system will, in a timely configurable schedule, just disconnect these accounts or these connections from the One Identity Manager and its database. Therefore exists a configuration parameter underneath of common authentication. This configuration parameters allow to configure the schedule. That means the time frame the system uses to re-evaluate these system connections. As we already saw, we support now passcodes. Passcodes itself are much better than all of these random passwords or initial passwords we had in the past. They are equipped with a time-bombed passcode. That means they expire after a specific configurable amount of time and cannot be used anymore. These passcodes are stored just to be used once on a person object. They get created with the help of a specific customizer method you can directly call on the person object. And they follow all the rules defined in password policies if they get generated. Standardly, these passcodes do have a lifetime of three hours. After these three hours, they cannot be used anymore. As you have as well seen, these passcodes can be used as well in the password reset web and every manager who like to do that can generate such a passcode with the help of the web portal to support his own team members. And yes, of course, our support with the new operations web is as well able to generate these passcodes for others.